Thanks to Skillshare for supporting my channel. Depending on where you live, you might not think that much about air quality. In fact, as someone who grew up in the northeastern United States, I rarely thought about what was in the air I was breathing unless I was walking by a bakery or a restaurant. However, air pollution is estimated to contribute to the deaths of over 7 million people every year, predominantly in low and middle income countries. Smog hanging over cities and smoke inside your home can put you at a higher risk of having heart disease, a stroke, or other respiratory diseases. And if you live in the US in 2020, you might be hearing more about air quality than you ever have before due to the wildfires that have been ravaging the West Coast for the last several months. Especially given that COVID-19 has made outdoor activities one of our few escapes from isolation, air quality is having a increased impact on the average person's life. So where does machine learning come in? Well, it turns out that there are a couple of challenges when it comes to monitoring and predicting the air quality index that machine learning can help with. First, while most areas have some number of air quality monitors that are typically installed by the government, they are often few and far between to the point of being potentially miles apart, making it very difficult for anyone to get an idea of what the air quality is like in local areas. This matters a lot everywhere, but especially in urban areas where things like construction can cause temporary and localized increases in air pollution that these monitors might not pick up. Interestingly, both scientists and average people are working to bridge this gap in our available data by placing mobile sensors around cities. These sensors can be placed near community centers, on buses, or wherever else they might be needed to get a better picture of air pollution in a given area. And from there, researchers can use that extra data to make predictions on what the air quality is like on any given specific location. For example, this paper features a model called HazeNet, which uses a combination of standard air sensors and mobile sensors to estimate air quality levels across the city of Sydney, Australia, with pretty high accuracy. These predictions can be overlaid onto a city map easily so that anyone curious about air quality levels only has to go to their website and type in their address or current location to get an idea of the air quality. In fact, this paper was published in 2017, and since then there have been a ton of apps that do the same thing. IQ Air is one example, giving you local predictions of air quality both indoor and outdoors, as well as a seven day forecast of the air pollution in your area. Another way that machine learning can help is that while you might have enough sensors to know what the air quality is like in your area right now, you might not know what it's going to be like in the next couple hours or couple days. And these changes may affect your plans if it becomes unsafe to go outside for long periods of time. However, as I mentioned when talking about IQ Air, machine learning can be used to predict how air quality levels might change within the next couple hours or couple days. In fact, there's an ongoing project in the UK aiming to create a similar mobile sensor system to the one that I mentioned earlier, where all of the collected data would be stored in the cloud and used to train a machine learning model for air quality prediction. Their recent work has focused on predicting the levels of particles called PM2s, which stands for particulate matter of less than two microns in size, with the goal of making these predictions over the next one to two days on an hourly basis. Interestingly, and in my opinion, extremely importantly, the system provides an uncertainty analysis that shows a range of values that the prediction might fall within. This gives users an idea of how good or bad the air pollution might actually be, and also how sure the model is of its prediction. Finally, we can use machine learning to predict how different interventions might improve air quality going forward. Specifically, we could use statistics to get an idea of how things like seasons, urban traffic, and other factors are correlated with air quality levels. This paper focuses on the influence of seasons on air quality, finding that air quality was worse during both the summers and winters in Lucknow, India. It's important to note that for the most part, these are correlations, not causal relationships. So while it might seem like one factor would have a strong impact on improving or worsening air quality levels, actually changing that factor may not have that result. However, it can be a useful way to model the impact of potential policies or regulations that aim to improve air quality. In short, there are a lot of opportunities for machine learning to help us better understand the air around us, both right now, as well as in the upcoming hours and days, as well as how to improve our air quality for the future. In fact, you might be able to help with that effort by getting your own mobile air quality sensors or working with local researchers to distribute theirs. 
This is called community science and it's an approach to scientific research that I actually find really interesting because as a scientist I find that average people often come up with the most creative and interesting ideas on how to solve problems as well as providing really important insights that we scientists just might not have. Plus it's a great way for both kids and adults alike to learn more about the world around them so if you have a local university near you you should check them out and see if you can get involved. If this kind of creativity sounds interesting to you but you don't know where to start, get started on your creative journey with Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey for less than $10 a month. They offer thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. Personally, I've been checking out their iPhone filmmaking course since I've reached the point where my phone has a better camera than my actual YouTube camera, so I'm trying to learn how to use it properly in order to make better videos. Skillshare members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions, and most classes are under 60 minutes with short lessons to fit any schedule. If you're interested, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click on the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership so that you can explore your creativity. Clicking that link supports my channel and will give you a jump start on your creative journey so sign up for Skillshare and show me what you make. Otherwise if you like this video you can let me know by subscribing to my channel and smashing the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this you can check out this playlist on medicine and AI where I talk about other ways that machine learning can be used for public health. Otherwise you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram to learn more about my PhD life and make sure that you have a plan to vote if you are in the US and elsewhere. I'll see you on Monday. Bye!